Hello, this is Bill Quackenbush. If you're receiving this video here, you have likely participated in the Wisconsin Department of Transportation's TIPO listening session of 2021. Uh, you had the opportunity to uh, register for the event as well as sign up for the cultural exchange. And so in doing that, uh, we thought we would put together a cultural exchange process that we could do virtually uh, since uh, uh, currently that we're um, um, under the uh, uh, effects of the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. That said, this year's conference was going to be done virtual, uh, so we thought we'd uh, um, try to at least uh, attempt to create a cultural um, exchange process. So what you're seeing here is a breakdown of uh, the cultural exchange gift and that would be the Ho-Chunk Cording Flute uh, that the uh, Department of Transportation um, had determined that to make 30 of them to gift out to participating uh, members of the listening session. And in doing so the cultural exchange process would be uh, for uh, you to receive this gift and it would be not in a complete state uh, in fact uh, uh, they were just uh, um, put together to the point where when we mailed them off um, uh, they still had some finishing work to do uh, but what this did was it allowed us to um, ask of you uh, to um, finish the flute um, and perhaps and then as well as um, consider participating in the uh, cultural exchange event uh, by telling us your experience of working with the flute as well as uh, then beginning to play the flute. And uh, what's going to happen is that we're going to um, basically draw from a hat a number that was supplied in your kit that you received. Um, and if your number is drawn, you'll be asked uh, to see if you could uh, uh, say a little bit about your experience and also um, and perhaps uh, play us a little bit on your flute. Um, I felt, though, it was important for us to send you a video of how your flute was uh, put together. Uh, because um, it'd be like anything else, right, uh, if you buy a car. Uh, you want to uh, know how it works. You know, you know, you want to you want to know how it makes what makes it tick. And so, what you're seeing here is the process of a flute, as such as the one you have in your hand, uh, being um, created. And as I watched the video unfold, I noticed in the beginning, um, I was I, there was a few images there of. Uh, the 30 uh, unfinished flutes sitting on a Pendleton blanket ready to be mailed out. Uh, one finished flute uh, after that uh, is stated basically on there uh, how your flute was made. Uh, so right now what you're seeing, and you can play this video back of course, is uh, the, the basic steps of m making a, a Native American cording flute. Um, uh, behind the images, once in a while, you'll see a board. Uh, it's a display board of uh, the different steps of the basic flute. Uh, the first step was obviously to take a, uh, a rough uh, piece of lumber or timber or whatever you want to make your flute out of there and render it down into, you know, something that would be able to uh, be put into the shape or form of a flute. Uh, I used a 2 by 2 I cut it down. Uh, to a one by two and then I open it up to hollow it out and I think uh, right now in this picture right here uh, I'm showing you the inside of how a flute works and why what you you know what you want to do is to avoid you know um, uh, allowing for clumps of glue in the flute for example or big holes in the sides of your flutes and basically you want a, a good playing flute so you want to make it you know uh, in certain ways. Uh, so that said, I'm going to jump into the video here in a little more now, and uh, I'm going to begin to continue to talk here on the processes that I see unfolding on the video here. Uh, so right here, I'm explaining to um, how 
uh, I had made the blank and glued it together. I took it apart, I hollowed out the inside, and I put it back together. And as it dries overnight, right here I'm explaining to you that you can take the time to make yourself a bird or a totem that sits on top, any shape and style you want. Uh, but there's some critical components to that. You know, you got to make sure you made a certain way so that it, it allows you to play. Here was one of the longer uh, processes that, or steps involved in making a flute. And that is actually after it, it glues and dries. Uh, when you take it out of the clamps, you, you, you begin to um, take off a lot of the excess uh, wood to get it down into more of the shape that you eventually received in the mail. This uh, flute here that I'm working on here uh, uh, was a little harder wood. Uh, it wasn't soft red cedar. It was just regular pine this one was here. But um, I was just using it basically for an example to show how a flute was made, how your flute was made. Uh, so um, here I just got done using a sander and took it down um, to, you know, expedite the process of making flute. Instead of using files and little sandpaper, um, I tend to use other resources such as uh, uh, red hot uh, iron, irons, right, uh, in order to uh, uh, enlarge the holes and cauterize the insides. And it just makes for an easier process if you're making a lot of flutes quickly. Uh, making 30 flutes in itself took quite a while. Um, I think on average with these flutes here, if you stayed right on it, you can make a flute uh, within four to five hours. But of course, there's drying time and other things you have to have ready and in place to make them. Um, here, I use a different iron now that you'll see here. This has a flat end on it. Uh, this is what I use to burn in that thipple area, the more all important uh, cutting edge on a flute. On any flute, anything that splits the uh, sound or breath that goes across it that makes the sound. Uh, this is the most critical part of the flute right here. Uh, so I take the time here to do this a little bit slower. And again, uh, using a hot iron, uh, it expedites the process a little bit instead of sitting there and tediously filing away with a little, you know, a uh, little file. Um, that said, um, I've made quite a few flutes through the years. Um, I, sh I shouldn't say I have it down to a science, um, but um, it becomes, you know, uh, a little easier through time in making a flute uh, if you do a few of them. And, and so uh, and so I wouldn't recommend using a red hot iron uh, for burning in a flute to most anyone. But if you're going to make a lot of them, it's a technique that you can learn. You know, if I can learn it, anybody can learn it, I would say. Uh, here, what happens? Here's what happens: is the you know iron gets a little too hot. Uh, you could have a flare up, and you don't want your flute to burn up, right? But uh, to a certain degree, it helps cauterize that edge there, and uh, but it expedites the process of getting that right angle. Right here, I'm explaining the difference between a 33 degree angle and a 45 degree angle. Um, um, so some people debate about that. You know, what angle is the best angle for a flute edge? Well. Um, Whatever makes makes it sound good, that's my, my theory. Uh, so here I'm uh, kind of touching it up more. I'm using files now and cleaning it up a little bit. They also has to aesthetically look good. And one of the last steps I do with that fipple area is I put a little bit of uh, crazy glue on there to, in order to um, harden up that, that, that cutting edge there a little bit because that cedar is quite soft or this pine is quite soft on there. So I kind of put a little bit of glue on there in order to... Um, um, assure that it doesn't get damaged, uh, you know, when you're sanding in there or playing around close to the triple area. So that said, <clears throat> excuse me there. So that said, um, at this point, I believe I find that it actually sounds quite good. And here now I'm telling you, you know, uh, that in order to bring this up to the key of A, um, I left the flute long. Uh, and now I'm going to cut the ends of the flute off, the bottom ends of that, and down there with a the saw here to bring that key up to uh, 440 hertz. Um, now, the reason why I'm uh, recording over the top of this is that um, I had quite a few minutes of uh, video time here, um, but I didn't want to sit and take up the whole 45 minutes of uh, the listening session uh, portion for this uh, cultural exchange process. Uh, with a video. So I try to get it down to 10 to 12 minutes. 
And so here now with the flute, um, we're going to begin marking the areas where I'm going to initially drill uh, the finger uh, holes for the sound holes there. Um, and then I'm um, then I cauterize that process as well. It works really well. It keeps around, um, and and it works pretty good. So so I turn that back around, get that torch back going over here, <laughs> and uh, uh, I wish I could move that fast, right? I wish my, my I suppose my boss wishes I could move that fast, right? <laughs> but uh, yeah. So anyway, so here I'm uh, making the finger holes. Um, to the to the key of a the pentatonic scale of key of a uh, um, with all your fingers on those five holes it's a at 440 hertz and with all your fingers off those holes of the, you know, with the five hole flute it's at the uh, higher scale of a of 880 uh, hertz um, the, after you've played a few of them and um, tuned if enough of them uh, you're going to hear those sweet uh, 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 sounds coming out of each of those holes and um, um, yeah so uh, that that said um, uh, when you make a flute it's it's uh, it's kind of fun knowing that you can make something out of a little square stock of wood there that uh, you can uh, keep for years to come or gift away right and that in part is why this uh, listening session being virtual uh, we were saddened to the fact that we possibly couldn't have had, had a cultural uh, exchange process but uh, by us putting our heads together we thought well well let's do it you know i'd just soon do something towards that process and and uh, doesn't hurt to get a gift or two so and so here it is the final products 30 flutes made yours is one of them in there uh, they were mailed out uh, i think i have the there they are, the boxes and the mailing list initially, and uh, we sent them out in a series of three mailings. Uh, some Johnny Come Lately's got theirs, the last end here, in fact, in practice, probably getting them today. So um, I finished this flute here. Uh, it was just, you know, this is at the stage that you receive your flute. Uh, so I, and, uh, I did have somebody email me, writing me, asking if they could... Uh, uh, use semi-gloss or uh, varnish on their flutes and I and they, they, she had asked several different things that she could ask if she could do and I said you could do <clears throat> you can do all of them and if you want it doesn't really matter they're pretty easy and uh, and uh, the only thing is you just got to be careful around that fipple area and, the, and that sound tract right there and that and where that bird or totem sits on top um, don't try to change that too much <clears throat> um, and then uh, you should be okay and uh, this here I used a, uh, a darker I can't, I can't remember what it was some type of r r redwood stain or something of that nature I can't remember though yeah so the um, next day I went back over there um, it was it was really hot and humid these last few weeks uh, so um, I let it dry overnight and uh, I went and stuck a second coat on here after my first cup of coffee in the morning here. Uh, and I let that dry a little bit and then I decided that, well, I'm going to um, water sand it, a uh, thousand grit here, and then uh, put a third coat of semi-gloss on it here. Um, I, I kind of wanted to contrast the bird, you know, and the... Um, and the dark wood on there too so uh that's what you'll see uh, on the final uh end of this flute here um the far end of i figured this flute is probably going to be given away uh, i don't think i've ever really sold too many flutes um but so this will probably end up being someone's gift as well uh, but it was <clears throat> kind of something i needed to, uh, to make in order to show uh, how your flute was made so i hope you enjoy th your flute and you continue to play your flute and uh, if you ever get interested in making your own flute uh, you know who to call all right enjoy the conference and listening session here and we'll talk to you soon